Okay, so today I would like to start uh, a little bit on, on my path also with the tower defense game. Uh, I've mentioned before that I would like to do something around that. And, and basically it's because we have a group of students that are quite interested in that. And I like to, to show things that people like. And I already have a couple of templates uh, that have to do with that. So let me see if I just go to my own blog. You should be able to see that I have some templates over here uh, that have to do uh, with uh, tower defense. So let me see my following, Deep Bombs, Christmas, Fluffy, Escape, G-Storm, Tinted, Invaders. Oh, well, it seems that I haven't published that one. Okay, so that's that's going to give me a chance to uh, polish it a little bit more and, and share it with you guys. So I do have a couple of games that I created with Tower Defense, so in the future I'm going to show you how to modify those. But right now I'm just going to start with, with the basics. So uh, I'm going to create three new projects today in just the span of some, minute, some minutes because I just want to show you uh, the three of them and they're quite cool. So you have three examples around tower defense. The people from the creators of a Construct 2, they are British, so they say turret defense. And I'm going to start with the intermediate, that is the turret behavior. So this one, um, I am just going to show you really quick how it works. And uh, this one is just to show you how the tower, the turret behaviors uh, has. So you have these two elements that are turrets, and they are going to detect my player that are here. And you see the red areas of influence that they have. If I'm outside, they're not going to detect me. And if I, if they are able to detect me, they start shooting at me. And well, that's basically it. So if you check the uh, well, the elements, the triangles that we have here. Uh, the properties include a range, that is this basically this circle that we're adding here. It also includes like how fast uh, they are going to shoot, so in this case one, so like once per second. And also if they have predictive aim or not, that I'm going to explain in a few seconds. In the events, you basically have three, but these two are the important ones. The first one is just to say that the player is a target, it's an enemy of the turret. So if I don't do that, the turret, well, uh, I'm even going to disable it, they are not going to do anything because they don't have anything to look for. Okay, so I'm going to enable it. The second thing is like what happens when the turret detects a target? And of course, depending on the rate of fire, what, what it's going to do. Uh, in this case, is going to spawn a projectile a bullet that you have here that has the bullet behavior. So then, if you don't do this, then the turrets are going to be able to detect me, but they cannot shoot because I'm not telling them to shoot. They are just like looking for the enemy. So these two are the important ones to understand turret behavior. Now, if you have this other one, this other example, predictive aim, basically is just to show you that there are two kinds of turrets. Uh, the blue one has uh, normal turret behavior, the red one has uh, predictive, and of course it's going to try to detect the possible path of the enemy, and it's going to try to shoot there. So it's not shooting where it is, it's shooting where, where it thinks that it's going to be. You can tell that after a little while, the red one begins to be more effective and if I'm constantly on the move, if I just stay put, uh, both are just hitting at the same time and that's it. Still, uh, of course, the predictive uh, aim is a little bit more uh, intensive. It has to do more things, so if you have too many towers that have predictive aim, perhaps your game uh, may slow down, but really that's, that's quite unlikely if you have a modern browser. And you can begin here to tell that the, this one is more effective. So that's basically it. Now, for the last example of today, 
the turret defense template that you have here. So this one is a full uh, game, and you're mixing two things. So I'm going to show you here. So first is the turret behavior that you already can see on the circles. And the second one is the pathfinding behavior that you have on the enemies that you have here. So in this game already, you have a spawner that is going to be creating these enemies. And as soon as the enemy is created, it detects that it has to go all the way to the red square. So it finds its own way. Um, so basically, it's a mix of two behaviors that are quite cool. If you have tried at some point to do a pathfinding behavior, you know that it could be a little cumbersome, that uh, it, may tame, it may take some time. Uh, it's not the most complicated thing in the world, but, it, but it, well, it needs some programming. So it's really good that uh, Construct already offers that. If you see, it has many more events, but they are quite explained and they are uh, separate in the enemy control and also the turret control. The turret, it's going to be almost the same as we saw before, that is adding the enemy, is it saying who's the enemy of the turrets, then is just going to say what happens when you need to shoot, that is to create a bullet, and uh, then is destroying the bullets so it doesn't have like hundreds of bullets just flying around, and this other part is just something that we haven't seen in this game, that is that you can create new turrets whenever you touch one of the black tiles. So, well, if you add hundreds of turrets, then the enemies are almost certainly never going to win, and you can destroy also turrets when you touch them, so that's that's what it's doing. The other part just has to do with, with the enemy, and you can tell that uh, the fine path is just saying like where you need to go, and in this case, this little red square is called enemy target, and is being used here to detect where it needs to go. And then uh, you have this spawner that is creating new enemies constantly. And then when it detects a new path, it moves along the path. Um, then it turns out that the bullets, that the enemies have a health, so they are not just destroyed with one shot. So uh, the health of the enemies uh, decrease every time that they shoot. And when the health of the enemy reaches zero or less than zero, it's going to be destroyed. So also you see here that uh, that it's doing something when that is basically destroying the enemy whenever it it, uh, it reaches the enemy target. So that's basically it for this small stream. I told you that it was going to be short. Uh, and that's the basics for the tower defense. Next time I'm going to go again through all of these things and quite likely I'm going to uh, do the entire process manually. I'm not going to use any of the templates. And, and then uh, when we advance a little bit on, on our game, uh, I am going to explain how to use my template so you have something cool to already done. And I've added many things like different kinds of towers uh, with different uh, values and, and powers and things like that. And I've also tinkered a little bit with the drag and drop to, to do like a better uh, uh, tower drop there. So so it, it's more like a full game but, and, and it's much bigger, but well, it's something that we're going to do step one step at a time, okay?